got started in New York City, naturally. Where else would the Virginia minstrels get started? <laughs> but um, they did, and uh, they uh, took the banjo almost immediately to England and Ireland and spread it right, right, right away. And of course, minstrel music was the most popular form of music in this whole period we're talking about. Uh, the original Virginia Minstrels had a bones player, a tambourine player, a banjo player, and a fiddle player, and that was the makeup of the, the group. And they kind of later, as these groups would expand it on that and got larger. But uh, so this is a um, what's called a, um, a banjarine. Actually, this was invented by a fellow named S. S. Stewart, who was a, a band, great, popular, uh, successful banjo maker in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he was a great proponent of uh, banjo orchestras. So they had all these different size banjos. They had a little tiny banjo, smaller than this ukulele banjo I've got up here, smaller than that, which was called a piccolo banjo. And they were all five-string banjos. Then he had, this was the, the piccolo banjo, of course, was kind of supposed to be the voice of the piccolo in a banjo orchestra. This banjarine was supposed to be tuned up and it would be the voice of the violin in a banjo orchestra, or fill that, that uh, tonal range. And they had cello banjos, great big ones, and they had all these different size five-string banjos, and it was uh, quite an amazing thing. Uh, he was a, wanted to get the, give the banjo respect, the same kind of respect that all classical instruments had, and essentially wanted to get it out of the hands of people like me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, now we're going to do a couple of popular banjo tunes and introduce another instrument that was very popular, one of our cows. These are the rib bones of an old gray Bramer cow of ours that's passed on, and uh, this old cow had the nasty habit when you had him pinned. If you weren't paying close attention to her, she'd run right over you. So uh, Pip and I both agree that we get on better with her now. <laughs> but for those of you not familiar with the rib bones of a cow as a musical instrument, they actually have a very long and colorful history. In fact, most uh, there's some musical historians that speculate that this is the oldest rhythm instrument known to man, and they think it goes all the way back to the cave-dwelling days. But they know it goes back as far as 2000 BC because some archaeologists located some fragments of pottery in the Mediterranean that they dated to that period, and these fragments had paintings of Egyptian women playing the bones and holding them the same way we do today to play them. And then they speculate that the jonglers, or the itinerant musicians of ancient Rome who traveled around uh, spreading the news and entertaining as they went. Also spread the use of the bones to places like England and Ireland where they've been used in their music for hundreds and hundreds of years. In fact, uh, Shakespeare even mentions the bones in his play, A Midsummer Night's Dream. He has the character of the weaver, Nick Bottom, say, I have an ear that appreciates good music. Let's have the tongs and bones. Then they made the trip over the big water to this country and they were played on the plantations by uh, the slaves. In fact, there are several slave narratives that mention bones and banjo as the instrumentation for Saturday Night Dance. And they were played on street corners and they were played in medicine shows and then they were played in minstrel shows. And uh, they actually became, uh, there's a character in a minstrel show called Mr. Bones. He was one of the end men. And, uh, he played the bones and told jokes, and then the other end man was Mr. Tambo, who played the tambourine and told jokes, and then you had the rest of the company. And this was all held together by the interlocutor, or the master of ceremonies. Well, Mr. Bones, did you hear that they moved the stockyard south of town? Really? How did you hear that? Oh, I got wind of it this morning. <laughs> That reminds me, did you hear that uh, Ferdinand and Eliza had a baby? Ferdinand and Eliza had a baby. I hadn't heard that, Mr. Bones. What did they name it? Fertilizer. <laughs> and I'll bet that you also haven't seen my imitation of milk. You do an imitation of milk? Yes. Well, can we see it? What kind of milk is that? Past your eyes. 